All right, Lewis Henry Mars joins us now from Haiti. He's the founder and executive director of La Coulape, a organization dedicated to peace building in Haiti. I hope I pronounced that well. Was that right? Yes, absolutely. Oh, You're good. right on there. Oh, great. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Um, we heard a little bit there from, from Dan about, you know, what's happening in Haiti, but of course he's on the border right now. You're in Haiti and work in the peace building efforts. Talk to us a little bit about how things are on the ground, the reality for people in their day-to-day -day lives, not, not just in Port-au-Prince, but all over Haiti. Well, uh, starting, first of all, in Port-au-Prince, uh, people are uh, uh, very much scared of uh, what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis because all of the neighborhoods are surrounded uh, by gangs. You cannot go in and out of Port-au-Prince either by the road or by air. So you're basically prisoner in, in, uh, in Port-au-Prince. And uh, they uh, invade neighborhoods uh, as they wish. And uh, once they start invading a neighborhood, you are to leave everything behind and try to go somewhere else. The problem is that they're everywhere. So you may have to move two, three, four times because each time you move, you fall into another neighborhood where there is a, a gang issue. And, and as your reporter said, most of the goods coming into Haiti come through the main Port-au-Prince port, which is now being looted by the gangs uh, downtown. They uh, had uh, attacked the port about a week or so ago, and uh, there was some police effort to uh, uh, turn them back, and they came back about uh, three days ago and started looting again. So there is a grave concern that uh, very soon we will have a situation where there's not, uh, there's a scarcity of food in Port-au-Prince, and to the fact that no containers can go out of Port-au-Prince, there's going to be a scarcity of food outside of, of, so, of Port-au-Prince. So how, the, how, are people, how are people living day to day? We know there's widespread hunger, a million people are starving, you know, the healthcare system is on the verge of collapse, there's been cholera outbreaks. Is there any access to clean water, sanitation? How are people living their days? There is some access uh, to clean water, drinkable, potable water, but sometimes people have to either walk miles or drive miles to find a, a water station that is producing uh, good water. Um, people adapt and, uh, and, and search for ways to cope because uh, they still have to live. And uh, they, they move, as I said, and uh, leave all of their belongings behind when their neighborhood is attacked. Some neighborhoods are defending themselves on their own. Either they have hired security guards or they've created uh, uh, self-defense groups. Uh, they uh, barricade themselves in and uh, decide to defend themselves because uh, the national police is too weak to defend all of the uh, all of the neighborhoods, mm. so uh, people adapt to the situation. Yeah. So before we get on to sort of the the political side of things and the and the possibilities of peace, can you just talk about the gangs in general? You you work with these reoccurring cycles of violence. What is it that these gangs want? We know that they don't want international intervention, but when you talk about them going from neighborhood to neighborhood, they're looting, what are they trying to control and, and what do they want for themselves and for Haiti if they're working towards Haiti, if that's what they say they're doing? Well, first of all, these gangs have been hearing about a, 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 a coming intervention led by Kenya for months and months and months. So uh, they've done, in my opinion, a preemptive strike to occupy the space. They uh, freed about 4,000 prisoners from, from, the, from the jails. So they increased uh, the number of uh, their soldiers and, and brought, many of them went to the different gangs that they were originally from, or they uh, were hired uh, in, in these different gangs. So they've increased their numbers. They have uh, ammunition and money and, and, and weapons, so they've actually prepared themselves to resist any uh, incoming intervention. 
they want a share of the political power now that they have so much military power on the ground, and they want us to have a say in who's going to uh, lead the country uh, officially. Uh, if they could, they would take it over completely, but uh, they've not, they're not at that point yet. So uh, there is, they're taking a position where they're going to be uh, looking to negotiate whatever solution uh, is, uh, mm. is, uh, is coming for, for the country. So, unfortunately, we're, we're running out of time, so I'll have to ask you quite quickly at the end, what hope do you have for peace? We know that global leaders are trying to figure something out, a, a quick solution. We've got this interim government being proposed. Is that the answer to you? What, what do you think the hope is? Well, the hope is that, uh, yes, that there be a, uh, a force that can counterbalance the power of the gangs and bring them to the negotiating table. But there's also the need to cut off the supply of arms and ammunition that are coming in. Once that supply, once those supply lines are reduced, they will be more amenable to negotiating a, a way out of this uh, situation. And uh, the, the, the council, the seven-person council, presidential council, is going to be a first step, but it's not the only step that is necessary. There's a necessity to have uh, jobs created, public investment and private sector jobs, because most of the soldiers in the gangs are young people that do not have work. Mm. And they're not educated, they don't have work. Going into a gang is mostly a question of having a job, mm. getting paid every week, getting paid every two weeks, and profiteering from all the uh, looting and, and drug running mm. and other sources of illegal right. gain. Right. Yeah, if that's all they have, I guess, uh, where else is there to turn? All right. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. Lewis Henry Mars, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.